Welcome back. My name's Jax, and I'm taking this Ford E350 cargo van and converting it into an RV. So if you caught the last video, a little introduction video, I went into some detail about myself and what my plans are. Uh, not only my plans for the future, but the plans uh, for this year's vehicle. Um, so if you've missed that, you might want to check that out. We're going to do some demolition. We're going to start by removing this overhead door, then all of the wood and the steel framing. Now the reason I'm removing the steel framing is it's becoming unattached from the fiberglass shell. Now for me to be able to attach wall and ceiling panels, I need a very strong and sturdy uh, base to build off of. So we're going to take this out and replace it with fiberglass reinforced um, two by twos. That will give us a nice strong straight structure to start with and then everything else will be able to build off of uh, really well. So let's get started on that. Once the rivets are drilled out, take a back of a claw hammer and pry the hinge away from the door panel and it easily comes right off the, um, the rail system. There's a total of seven door panels with the last one being connected to the overhead spring. As you can see in record time, I remove all the wooden slats that were screwed onto the metal framework. All right, so day two of the demolition. Did fairly good yesterday. Didn't work a full day, but you know, got done with what what I felt I was capable of doing. But uh, but today we're going to take a look at what we uh, what we need to do to, to carry on. Uh, we encountered a couple of problems, a couple of issues that we're going to have to s solve first before we can continue. But basically, I ended up uh, I removed the entire garage door setup, the track, and all of the framing associated with that exposed all the lights light and light wiring um, I did run into an issue where there was a piece of conduit uh, that they ran the wiring through all the way along this edge here so we had to we had to cut had to cut them cut them back and eventually we'll have to run that back over and connect the rear tail light system back up. There was not also a, a dome light, an LED dome light that, that was in the middle on the ceiling that we had to remove. Um, we got all the wooden slats removed from the walls and I started removing all of the, uh, the metal framework. Now uh, as you can see uh, they were stuck on there some of them were stuck on there pretty good and they they did use two different kinds of of sealant which i'm not quite sure the reason behind that but they 
uh, adhesive or whatever they, they used, but either way, um, I managed to get one side pulled away from the wall, and then I was able to just pull down and it just pulls, pulled right off the ceiling and then pry and cut and scrape with a utility knife to get the rest of them to come out. Now I did uh, do some general cleanup here with a with a scraper, but we're going to have to try to get that residue off of there as best we can. I'm going to try some acetone, maybe some mineral spirits, and then you know, as much as we can get off, then we'll, we're going to have to rough it up with a sand sandpaper in order to have a good adhesion for the fiberglass. But the, the reason that we I didn't continue on with the metal framework is that um, this whole this whole wall and stuff just started to get real, um, real flimsy. So I don't want to continue um, removing any more of the steel frames until I get some wood support in here. So that's going to be our next. Um, that's going to be the next, next thing we do. So we're going to clean up all the um, adhesive. And then we're going to lay out, start a layout for the, the wall studs and the ceiling studs. And we're going to get those installed. And then we'll jump back to the back here. Well, a little impromptu break. All the batteries are flat. Gotta hand it to DeWalt though. These 18 volt tools that I'm using right now are all about 15 years old or, or more. Now the bad whole bunch of batteries back when I was in construction. Now I haven't really looked at those. I'm pretty much guaranteeing that they're all gonna be no good they haven't been charged in a number of years so I don't expect them to be any good so I've got three good batteries that I bought so hopefully hopefully I'll be able to do what I need to do with those three but at any rate I tried uh, I tried acetone to get this uh, adhesive off, adhesive off and it was just it wasn't coming off and I went and got some goo gone stuff and that that really wasn't touching it either um, end of the day I'm gonna to have to abrade the surface of this fiberglass shell anyways uh, to make sure that I get a good good adhesion with uh, with the system I'm gonna to use to install the, the timbers so I just went ahead and, and hit it with a with a flap disc grinder uh, probably 80 grit or whatever scuff it all up get that off of there and then I'll go back over it with uh, acetone and clean it all off now the downside of grinding of course is all the dust um, we've got some N95 masks and some safety glasses and I'm wearing rubber gloves but the rest of my skin is exposed so we're going to be needing a good shower here uh, afterwards to get cleaned up from all the fiberglass dust. But once it's once this half of the container here, the, the, the van is, is cleaned up, uh, I'll be able to start framing in. Now I, I've got the door. Uh, so I know what the rough opening of that is. Now the windows, uh, they're not supposed to be coming until I think later this week. Uh, so I think we'll be okay. I mean, today's, today's Monday, so I, I should be able to get this all cleaned up and ready to go and, and, and all the wood prep because I want to brace. I want to do the ceiling first and uh, I can brace that up. But I'm almost thinking um, put a little curve, you know, brace up the middle here with a little bit, maybe an inch up higher than the, the sides are so when everything sort of cures the fiberglass cures I'll have a natural bow to the to the roof or watershed and it'll also give a little bit of extra strength when I go to put in the uh, the ceiling it'll help hold that anything that's curved is going to have a little more strength than something that's flat so I think that'll be a, a pretty good idea once I start implementing it but I still got a lot of prep work to do but right now I'm going to take a break um, I feel itchy already, but we're going to have to get through this part and, uh, and get on to the next good stuff. So, any rate.
Okay, so we've got all the uh, adhesive ground off. Got to key it all back with the 80 grit the palm sander. So all we got to do is wipe that down with some acetone, clean it up, and it'll be ready for epoxy when we get to that point. Um, up here I've got a frame, a roof frame mocked up. I'm going to cut to the width with a bevel on the end here to allow for some wiring to go through. And then I've got some uh, kickers here. They're a little proud, so it's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a bow, which is which is fine. I kind of want a little bit of it, a little bit, bit of a bow. So that should take care of the roof beams. I'm going to have three of those go in for right now. One there, one here in the middle. This is going to this is going to be my my measuring point from everything else. My shower pan will fit in down here just on this line. There'll be a half of a frame left over when I put it into place, I think. I gotta double check, but at any rate, that'll be how that's gonna work, and then everything else after that will be two foot on center. Now, with the door being in place here, we'll have to fart around with that a little bit, but let me go get the door and see what that looks like. All right, so mind you, that door will be mounted from the outside. That's the outside of the door that you're looking at, but essentially that's that's where that's going to go. Shower pan will be over there. So obviously we're going to need a, a different framing along this edge because the two foot on center is going to come over here. But what we'll do is we'll, 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 we'll install this one. We'll put the roof one in at two foot where it needs to go. We'll put a secondary vertical one here with a door and then we'll frame this in with a header to stiffen that and section it up and then that'll take care of that with no problem. And then everything else will be two foot on center depending upon how the windows are. I gotta get the windows here and then we'll be able to figure out what I need to do to frame in that. But that, I wanna get this first three sections of, of framing in and fiberglass before I remove the other three metal frames and do this cleanup thing all over again. Right now with that that roof roof in here everything's stiffened up again so I feel that that's that's definitely the direction that we're gonna take. So for today that's gonna be it for me. Um, I'm full of fiberglass so I'm gonna throw my laundry in and take a nice cold shower to close the pores and get this fiberglass dust off and then grab some dinner and a well-deserved rum. So I got some West Systems 105 and some 206 hardener, it's a slow hardener. And then I've got some 404 adhesive filler that I'm gonna add in. I don't know how much I'm gonna need. A little thin. Kind of almost want it like peanut butter. Okay. 
All right, so that's one. So that worked out pretty good, actually. Three pumps. Now, the tricky part. All right, so. Well, we've got it. We got the three roof frames in. Hopefully, hopefully it sets, should set. West Systems seen and heard some pretty good things about it, so we should be in good shape. But that's as far as I can go at the moment. Uh, and tomorrow, Right here, in between these two frames, is where the one fan will go, so we can we can frame this in for that, and then that way the the, the fan actually has something to screw to solid, and then we'll fiberglass all that in too. Thank you very much for tuning in. Be sure to check out next week's video, and if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe.